So we will talk about uh, cohomology of stack of Stokas. Uh, um, we begin by review uh, review the definition of cohomology um, in Zhu Wei-Yun's talk. Uh, and today we will only talk about the global case, only um, always um, talk about the uh, global Stuka, not the local one. I'll call it review. Uh, so the setting is the same as in Zui Yun's talk. We have a, a curve. Projective, smooth. Geometrically connected. Uh, over FQ. And we will note F, its function field. And we will uh, use the standard notation. So A is the ring of Adel. Uh, o is the ring of integral Adele. We will have a J, a reductive group, a split reductive group to simplify. Uh, connected. Um, to simplification, uh, we will have some exception uh, for the talk. So we assume G is semi simple. It's just to simplify some notations. And uh, we will only consider the case without level structure to simplify the notations. Uh, at the end, I will tell you uh, what, uh, what's the result for wind level structure. And the coefficient will be QL. So we fix uh, L not equal to P. P is the character of FQ. And the dual group we not G hat. So that's the setting. And as you already say in Zui Yun's talk, we have the space of automorphic forms. Mm. 
So they are the space of function with compact support on this set, g of Adele quotient, but quotient, but by g of f on the left and by g of o, the integral Adele on the right, because we consider the uh, no level structure case with coefficient in QL bar. So we are interested in a uh, space of automorphic forms. Uh, and the cohomology of Stuka will be uh, some generalization of the space of automorphic forms. And in this talk, uh, we will uh, talk about some property about, about the cohomology, uh, such as the finiteness property and uh, the smoothness property for the cohomology shifts. And to say what they say about the, what they can give us, the information about the space of automorphic forms. Uh, so as you already say, this space uh, is the same as the space of functions on FQ point of boundary. And the stack of Stuka are generalization of FQ point of Bungi. This is a, a QL vector space, and, and it may have infinite dimension. In, in fact, in most cases, it has infinite dimension. And this space is uh, equipped with an uh, action of the Heike algebra, uh, as you already say uh, in the in talk. Here uh, I note uh, the this H the Heike algebra. So my notation may be a slight different from Zurich's notation. Uh, the Heike algebra is a space of continuous functions on the double quotient set. So we have the Heike uh, action. Mm, we are interested in uh, the, the Galois group uh, of uh, function field. Uh, so mm, this is the automorphic set. We want to have a link with the Galois set. Uh, and how to relate this with the Galois group of function field of I of the curve. Uh, so that's why we uh, introduce the cohomology of stack of Stukas. We will see that the cohomology group of stack of Stukas uh, uh, has some action of the Galois group of the function field. So now we recall the definition of cohomology of Stuka. So we can take a finite set. Uh, first, recall that we have the stack of Stuka uh, 
Oui, l'autre bande. Uh, I know that I hear in the install create note I there. Anyway, there is a, a I note how many legs it has. So we have the map of legs. The stack of Stuka is over I uh, copy of the curve. So uh, for this, uh, for the moment, I didn't bound it this. So it is a, a it is an inductive limit of algebraic stack. Uh, we, we don't want to work with an inductive limit of algebraic stack. We want to work on uh, some algebraic stacks. So we need the bound. The bound is given by a representation of the dual group. So take a QL linear representation of I copy of the dual group. Uh, they call that this is the uh, Category of finite dimensional QL linear representation. Uh, and we have the bounded stack of Stuka. I know stab new. Uh, Higher, so, so this is uh, like the smaller than lambda in the way in stock. Now it is a uh, uh, Danini Manford stack, a uh, locally of finite type. So Stuka is associated to I and W. If you have different I and different W, you have different stack of Stukas. On this stack of Stukas, uh, we have the canonical shift. Uh, I note it. I note it. I say, but uh, you have already said. In fact, we can define it more canonical. Uh, learning canonically from the geometric set that can equivalence. And when W is irreducible, it is equal to the IC shift of Stuka. Uh, but here for the notation, I note it, I say anyway. Uh, I note uh, this P, the map of legs, and the cohomology. Uh, first, we have the cohomology complex. which is a direct image of this IC shift. So this is a complex uh, of inductive limit of contractible shifts. Uh, and we have the degree for any degree. Uh, we have the degree J cohomology shift. So this is a shift over I power of the curve. Uh, 
uh, and here what I mean uh, an uncontractable shift, it means an uh, inductive limit of contractable shift. Uh, and to say, uh, to say how this is an inductive limit of contractable shifts, we use the Hadan Nashman uh, statification on stack of Stukas. So I, I recall that because we will use it later in the talk. So to say this. So the stack of Stuka, it is a uh, locally of finite type, but not of finite type. We can write it as union of uh, open substacks of finite type, indexed by the uh, dominant COVID of G. Uh, I think the notation is this. So this means. Dominant COVID so each of these uh, open substack is of finite type. You have already seen that the cohomology shift is an inductive limit of the cohom of the shifts indexed by mu. So this is a direct image of the IC. Restrict to the open substack. And since the sub open substack is of finite type, uh, this is a constructible shift. And in this way, uh, we say that the cohomology shift is an inductive limit of constructible shifts. That's what we call unconstructible. This? Yes. Uh, I didn't recall the def. Okay. Yeah, okay, uh, so we have the, uh, we have the map from stack of Stuka to stack uh, of the stack Bungie. Uh, the map is that we send the uh, Stuka, so in with some legs and a G tosser with modification on the legs to the inverse image of Fobinus of the G tosser. Uh, this is uh, the modification is on the legs and modification is bounded by W. The map is that we send this to the G tosser. And on Bungi, we have the Hadan Nashman stratification. Uh, this. 
Um, this says that it's the um, had a canonical Hadan Nachman fil uh, filtration of this G tosser is uh, bounded by mu. Uh, and the uh, Stuka smaller than mu is just the inverse image of this in the whole stack of Stukas. Uh, is that okay or need a more example of SL2? Maybe you can the Ah, okay. Uh, so that I give an example of SL2. Uh, in this case, uh, Mm, for example, the uh, FQ bar point of uh, bound SL2, they are the uh, vector bundle of rank 2 uh, with the uh, uh, determinant, trivial determinant. So uh, I can write them as, uh, for example, if I take x is uh, P1. Uh, in this case, the uh, rank 2 vector bundle are uh, all of the form uh, O n n plus O minus n uh, and in this case the mu they are just uh, an integral like uh, Mu are of this form, uh, and the the Hadad Nahashma uh, filtration of this vector bundle is just uh, the 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 couple n minus n, so this is. Uh, It's like this, uh, and from this example, you see also that uh, here there are infinite uh, many vector bundles. That's it's. Uh, vector bundle is the uh, ah yes uh, yes uh, no. Yes. because we consider dominant uh, COVID. Mm. And th this is of uh, locally of finite type, but not of finite type, because there are infinitely many uh, vector bundles can occur inside. And uh, this bounded one, it has finite type, and there are only finitely many uh, vector bundles. This? Yeah. Uh, uh, so W is used to bound the modification. Uh, the modification between a G tosser and the Fubinus image of the G tosser. So uh, this, they are isomorphism outside the legs and around the legs the modification is bounded by W, and the W is noted by lambda in Zui Yun's talk. Uh, I thought that now, uh, there's a new that gives the bound. Ah, uh, so uh, perhaps uh, my notation is different from other notes. So uh, here, here the W is uh, bounded the modification, and mu is bounded the Hadanashman filtration. In the in stock, there are also two bounded, 
One is bounded the modification of legs. Another is to bound the um, Hadana Hashman filtration. Uh, but I forgot his notation for has uh, both of these are low. but there are two there are two uh, bound, two kind of bounded. One is by the representation, another one is by the Hadana Hashman stratification. Uh, and that's also a kind of point to confuse with the Shimura varieties, because in Shimura varieties usually we note this for 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 some other bounded, uh, how, how to say, on Shimura varieties there are um, perhaps, we usually use, um, uh, there are some points of confusion, but uh, here uh, there are two, two, um, two things to bond it, and they uh, play a different role. Uh, and in, in our talk, when we consider cohomology, we fix a W at the beginning, and we will always consider this, this cohomology shift. So we consider uh, the I and W are fixed at the beginning, and we study this shift. Uh, and we will see that to study this, we will need to consider this smaller than mu things. Uh, this? Yes. No, they are the one and in another. When the mu become bigger and when you have mu one smaller than mu two, and the smaller than mu stuka smaller than mu one is and than stuka smaller than mu two. Uh, they are given by uh, open immersion. And this. Uh, Perhaps I should write. So if, if you have two um, dominant COVID, mu uh, one smaller than mu two, you have open immersion of stack and of Stukas. And open immersion of stack of Stukas give you uh, a map of the cohomology. So this open immersion induce a map for the cohomology, and this is the flash uh, in this inductive limit. So these limits are given by this kind of map. Uh, and now we will, s let's say, um, what uh, this uh, cohomology shift uh, have as actions. And we fix some more. Um, so we will consider the generic fiber of this cohomology shift. So we, we will note uh, eta, the generic point of x. And uh, 
and the notes eta bar, the geometric, we fix the eta bar, a geometric generic point. So this is uh, spec F. This is spec F bar, uh, uh, algebraic closure of F. For I copy of the curve, we will note its generic point uh, eta I. So I put I uh, lower. And we fix a geometric point over the generic point. Uh, so I note uh, I note uh, this spec fi don't so fi is the function field of i copy of the curve. Uh, and the uh, remark is that this fi is not i copy of this f, so that's why I put the i lower. And, and what we have uh, on the cohomology group, so. Now we have the cohomology shift. We consider its geometric generic fiber. So this, this one on this. And this is a QL vector space. Uh, it may have infinite dimension. Uh, because it's uh, inductive, uh, because it's inductive limit of uh, uh, finite dimensional vector space. And uh, this is what we call cohomology group. Uh, sometimes uh, we note it H. Uh, when index i and w when this uh, strict edge, not this round edge. And the. Uh, there be some j, or are you just repeating the j? The j? Oh, I forgot the j. I forgot the j. Yes. So in our talk, uh, I will only consider one degree. So there will be always a J to mention the degree. Sometimes we can consider the complex, but to simplify, I consider a fixed degree cohomology shift. Uh, and you already say uh, in the in talk, when there is uh, no legs, which means if you take I, the empty set, uh, in this case, and W, you can take it the trivial representation. In this case, the Stuka is over the a point, the FQ, because uh, X, uh, X, uh, X, uh, if there's no, uh, if I is empty, the I power of X is, uh, is just a point, the base point spec FQ. And in this case, the stack of Stuka is a discrete stack, the, it's equal to the FQ point of Bungie, and the cohomology only have, um, it's only in degree zero, and this is equal to the space of automorphic forms.
and when they are legs, what we have uh, more. So, uh, so first we have an action of the Hecker algebra by the Hecker correspondence as for the automorphic forms. Uh, and it has an action of the partial forbidden morphism. Uh, as you already say in Zui Yun's talk, so these are morphism. Uh, to say if I not uh, the for I, which means for the for the base, it is a. Uh, For the base, it is for business for the uh, IZM component and the identity for the other component. And over this, we have the shift. And the partial for business morphism uh, are isomorphism of this when the itself that we note uh, f i and the composition of uh, all the f i are equal to the total forbidden on the cohomology that's why we call them partial forbidden it kind of on cap the forbidden And uh, we have an uh, action of the um, the V group uh, of the generic point. So this is just uh, by the definition because it's geometric generic point. Mm. So the V group uh, is uh, a V group in the Galois group correspond to the Z. The Galois group is for the uh, Z uh, height. Mm. So you have Galois group, and inside Galois group, you have the V group. And here we have V group because it's QL vector space. So comparing the uh, automorphic space of automorphic form, now we have uh, action of partial forbidden and the action of the V group. Mm. This one is uh, easy to get because it's just uh, by definition the geometric generic point, and the partial forbidden morphism is not evident, and that's 
one of the reasons why Dreamfield introduced Shiduka, and especially the iterated Shiduka. Here I write a uh, Shiduka, uh, not iterated. But to define partial Fubini morphism, you need to use the iterated Shiduka, which means it, it's G0, G1, G2, the iterated modification. Uh, and why this partial Fubini's is important? Because uh, Yeah. Because these two action together uh, and uh, you add something when the with some uh, finiteness property on the cohomology and Dreamfield's lemma. This will give you an action of the V group of function field on the cohomology. Uh, I copy of this V group. So that's what we are interested uh, at the beginning, the Galois group of the function field or the V group of the function field. And here we, know, we say, note that the action is i power of the action. So when there is no legs for this automorphic form space, we can't see this action of uh, Galois group. Um, we see this action only when there are legs. That's why we introduce the uh, cohomology of Stuckart. Uh, we will see more about this. Uh, so in, in the following of the talk, uh, I will first uh, talk about uh, the finiteness condition on the cohomology, and then the magic Dreamfield's lemma uh, to explain how this give you how these two action give you an action of the V group uh, power i on the cohomology. And in the second talk, we will see that how this some application of the action of this group such as the uh, smoothness property and uh, some other properties. Why isn't it the Galois group in the third point? Why yeah. not the Galois group of, why the subgroup A? Uh, so here uh, we consider the uh, QL, uh, the cohomology group is a QL vector space uh, and we know that uh, for when you have uh, this, it's factorized by the the height uh, if and only only if the image of this is in that L. Uh, and uh, here we consider the QL cohomology, not the ZL cohomology. So it's the uh, it's a V group we need to consider. And if we consider the ZL cohomology, and if we know it is of finite type, then the action of V group factorized by Galois action. Uh, but in general, it's, uh, it's this we have a priori. Okay. Yeah? Please tell on each of the elements uh, each of this h smaller than mu? Uh, yes. Oh. yes, that's a, thanks for the question. It's an important point I forgot to mention. So uh, this, uh, unfortunately, the Heike algebra doesn't fix the smaller than mu piece. It sends the smaller than mu to a smaller than bigger things. And the partial for beneath morphism doesn't fix smaller than mu neither. It, uh, uh, it sends uh, h smaller than mu to h smaller than mu prime for mu prime bigger. Uh, only this one acts on each smaller than mu piece. So we count. So it's really this group have these two action, not the h smaller than mu one thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, I was just trying to address Jared's mark, but even though you can't get the top two bullet points for the entire space, the, the, the 
<sighs> the question is that why uh, here uh, is the V group and not the Galois group? Uh, Well, perhaps Galois does act on this co-limit of vector spaces, but not in a way which commutes with these other two actions. Um, uh, I, I don't think Galois group acts on, on this, this one. Mm. But uh, to say, th this is a a, de a detail that we can fix this uh, later in the question section. So in in this, if you want, you can think it as a Galois group. Uh, it's uh, the, the, it's not the main point, Galois group or V group. The main point is how to get from the the I copy of the curve to the only uh, the I copy of the Galois or V group of each function field uh, of function field. So uh, th this Galois or V is more or less related to coefficient and uh, infinite or not infinite dimension you know, things. Uh, and uh, yes, we, yes. So for the moment, we take the V group. Please, you can take if you take i equals to m, then you get the space of of the forms. And for example, if you take i equals to the one leg, so you get the, the action of the V group. Yes. And the high algebra, does this realize the global balance? Mm, no. <laughs> if I take one leg, it's true that I have an action of one way group, uh, but it's uh, uh, not enough and far, far not enough to get the long runs because uh, here we get an action, but we don't know how the cohomology decompose uh, along these actions. Um, uh, you will see some conjecture uh, related to this later. Uh, are there other questions concerning this? If not, uh, I will go to talk about the finiteness property of the cohomology. Ah, I remember why the Uh, of the cohomology group. So in general, there are, we can say there are two methods. One is by the eschler shimura uh, relations.
uh, another method is by the constant term morphism. Uh, so uh, today I will uh, talk about uh, this uh, first. This method use Ashley Shimura relations. So I will first uh, present um, present the Ashley Shimura relations contracted by Van Sanla Fogg, and then say how this amplifies the finiteness property. And uh, at the end, I will give a remark on this second one. So we will uh, this. So let's recall the Eichler Shimura relations, um, begun by the Heiker operator. So, in one word, this is a, a this says that uh, you have a polynomial of a, a wind coefficient given by the Heiker operator, and the polynomial uh, uh, annulates the for partial Fubini's morphisms. So let's begin by the call Heiker operator. We take uh, V a place of X. Mm. And we have the local Heiker algebra. Uh, we denote it indexed by small v. So this is the uh, function on the double coset of the completion of the function field on v and the complete local ring on v. So here, uh, OV is a complete local ring on V, and F, V is a faction field on V. So it's a standard local Heiker algebra. And we take a representation of G height. Mm, by the theta k isomorphism, this corresponds to a function uh, in this local Heiker algebra. And we denote it by H, um, the big way and small way. Uh, and uh, you have already said in Zui-In's lecture that each function in the local Heiker algebra induce, induces a, a, a Heiker operator on the cohomology. Associated to this function, um, but the, you need to restrict the cohomology shift outside the place V. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, this 
呃 ，map 呃 ，you can add some decoration. There exist a、uh, dominant COVID big enough such that for an for any meal. This, uh, it sends the smaller than mu piece to smaller than mu piece plus kappa. Uh, and to get the Ashley-Schmura relation, what we want, want the first step is to extend this Heike operator on the place V, and then get a relation of the Heike op operator uh, when the partial Fubini's map. Mm. To realize this, we need a, a special case of the excursion operator of Van Sona Fog. So now I will recall a special case of、uh, excursion operator. Uh, associate to uh, the associate to v and a small v, but uh, uh, there are only two minutes, so I think、uh, we will begin this in the next talk.、Uh, so in the next talk, I will recall this and uh, uh, write the Ashley-Schmura relation and and show how this implies this. And then explain the Greenfield lemma and the action of V group, and then explain how this implies some smoothness property for the cohomology. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is that here we have open in machine, and uh, uh, oh, um, because this mu is uh has nothing to do with the mu in affine Grassmannians. In affine Grassmannians, the mu is the W here. I'm sorry for the notations. So in affine Grassmannian, there is some bounded things. Sometimes we note mu, sometimes lambda, something, and that bounded in affine Grassmannian、uh, becomes W here, because it's the relative、uh, position between the G modification of two G tensors. The relative position is、uh, given by this. So in affine Grassmannian, we only have the relative position to bound it, but in Stuka, what we have more is the, the relation. Is the map to the boundary, so we really have a Adanashman that filtration on the G tensor itself, not the relative position, but G tensor itself, and this、uh, bounded is noted by mu.、Uh, so yes, there are two two bounded things. Is that question? No more question. I have a question. Yeah. Oh, because、uh, in the definition of the Heike operator, uh, you, how to say, you, we we can say that you make some modification on on the place V. Uh, you make some modification. 
the CAC operator if it is uh, given by a function uh, on the local algebra on V. Uh, what it do is that it gives you a cohomological correspondence. Uh, and in the middle, uh, you have a modification on place V. Uh, and then your, your, the Stuka, when you have modification on some place, it's defined outside that place. Uh, so, uh, so by the definition of Heike algebra by the Heike correspondence, you can't define it on place V. Uh, that's why we need excursion operator to extend it on place V. Yes. Okay, I have a question. So, do we have to find any results for the coefficient? Yes, uh, we have. I will talk next. Uh, I also have a naive question. So, the non-iterated moduli space of Stuckers looks more naturally uh, defined on the symmetric product of uh, the curve instead of I copy some. Uh, but we define it this way. Uh, is it to, be, uh, to, to, to just to get the uh, the action of the product of the labor? Uh, I didn't really understand the, uh, the question. Uh, so, uh, Could you repeat it? It looks to me that the, the, uh, the non-iterated yeah. space of Stuka, the more, a more natural base of it is the symmetric product of the curve instead of uh, the Instead of really remembering the, the ordering of uh, the, the lens. Uh, uh, but I think to define the partial provenance, you really first do yeah. the question is uh, uh, I don't know how to say. Uh, is she, she asked the not iterated Shiduka. So this one seems more naturally to get an uh, action of the, the I copy of the V group. Is that the question? No, sorry. So the question was just a naive question. So I, I, I think the non iterated moduli space of Shiduka, like uh, the base is more naturally a symmetric product of uh, the curve. Like without remembering, uh, re without remembering the ordering of the legs, but we define it so that it lives over ice copies of the curve. And I wonder, is it because we want to get a uh, action of the? Uh, the question is why we need uh, iterated Stuka? Oh. I think the, so why legs, the legs are labeled by elements of i here in this, in this model. The legs are labeled by elements of i. So they're not really symmetric in that sense. You just don't order them, but they're labeled by uh, 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 And what, uh, I think I can't answer the question, but I can give some remark on concern the question. Uh, first is that the iterated Shiduka was introduced by Junfield to construct the partial forbidden morphism because on this not iterated Stuka, we can't construct partial Fabini morphism. Uh, so iterated Stuka is uh, really needed to construct partial Fabini morphism. And the second remark is that I think here the uh, it's it's not the, the symmetric or not doesn't play uh, play a so important role. Uh, I mean. Mm, Here to pass from this field to this field, uh, even when have more symmetric, uh, it can't help. We really uh, need the to pass. We really need to use Junfield's lemma to pass from this one to this one. Uh, so even we have more symmetry on the no iterated Stuka, uh, we can't get this neither. It's not the it's not the order of the legs which count. It's it's doesn't matter the order of the legs. I I want to say. Um, 
the the difference f between this and this uh, are the partial forbiddenness and not the order of legs. I don't know if that's uh, uh, that's, <laughs> but we can discuss later. Okay, thank you. So we keep the other questions for the Q and A sessions. Thanks.